Hi, it's Brandon here. I am making a video today uh, exploring more of my Behringer Neutron uh, synthesizer. Uh, specifically, I wanted to learn a little bit more about the patch bay. So, you know, some a reminder of my background is that I'm a saxophonist. Uh, I don't really have any kind of background making electronic music of any kind. You know, uh, I never played guitar or anything like that. I didn't really get into computer-generated music. Uh, I started playing uh, Iwi, the wind controller, uh, and started getting into synthesis that route. And I'm not really interested in emulating acoustic instruments. You know, I double on flute and clarinet, so if I want a uh, flute or clarinet sound in my music, I'll play flute or clarinet. Um, I've never been happy with emulative sounds, even though some of them these days are getting pretty, pretty amazing, but that's not my interest. I'm interested in being able to access the thing that all these keyboard players get to play uh, and loads of weird, wild, synthesized sounds. So that's my motivation here. Uh, so um, my goal here is that I'm looking over things and I realize in addition to the two, what we would think of as main oscillators on this synthesizer, there's also the LFO, which gets way up into audio rate. Uh, and the filter itself is resonant. Uh, which means we can tune it and play it. Now, I'm not going to demonstrate playing these filters today, but I'm going to get a patch going that gets four, all four uh, oscillators or sound pitch sources going, uh, tunable and in a way you can mix them. And I think with the version 2.0 firm, firmware for the Neutron that you can get key tracking on the LFO, but I'm not 100% sure. But the point's moot because I don't have a controller handy right at this moment. Uh, so I just want to set up the patch and get all of the, the four sound sources going. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to break the normalized routing uh, by plugging this cord into nothing into uh, the VCFN. And what that does is it takes the, um, the oscillators out of the mix. So now I roll up VCA bias. We're hearing no oscillators. Uh, that's because they, the normal routing, the oscillator mix goes into the VCF in, which then goes into the, um, the, the VCF out, goes into VCA in, and that's how we get sound. But I don't want to do that because I don't want the oscillators running through the filter. Um, okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to get control and uh, uh, the ability to hear the filter and the LFO. So control... I'm gonna run them each through a resonator. So I'm gonna send VC, or not resonator, an attenuator, excuse me. And I'm gonna run VCF1 output into attenuator one in, and then I'm going to run um, the LFO output into attenuator two in. And so now I can control the levels of those with these two knobs. So just so we can hear it, here is attenuator one, which is the resonant filter going into the VCA. Now, we can't hear anything yet. That's because it's not yet resonant. There we go. And now it's tunable here. All right. And now if I instead did attenuator two into the VCA, we can hear that, we can change the shape. All right, uh, keep in mind this LFO is digital uh, and I don't know if it's uniform with all digital oscillators, but the digital oscillators that I have gotten to mess with on some Dave Smith instruments, uh, the Evolver specifically, and on this alias quite a lot. This one severely, when you get into the high range, so you get some digital artifacts uh, extremely uh, when you get into the high range of the oscillator. Um, so anyway, uh, let me undo that. Whoops, there's our filter. I'm gonna turn the VCA bias back down uh, until we get things leveled back in. Okay, so the next thing I wanna do is I want to be able to combine those two sound sources with the onboard regular oscillators. So we're going to go from attenuator one, which is the filter, into some one A, and then from attenuator two, which is the LFO, 
into sum one B. And now sum one output is those two things summed together. Right? Okay, so then the next thing I wanna do is get those mixed into the regular oscillators. So I am going to, first, I am going to send, get rid of that VCI, VCA bias again. All right, so we're gonna go out of sum one into sum two. So sum one output, which is the sum of the LFO and the resonant filter into sum two A. And then we're gonna take the oscillator mix and go into sum 2b. And so now coming out of sum 2 will be the oscillator mix and the other two things. So turn the VCA bias up. We're hearing one oscillator, this one, right? And then I can turn that oscillator, I can blend in oscillator 2. And now I can bring in the resonant filter and now I can bring in the LFO. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the VCA bias down uh, to pull all that down. And then there's one last thing that I just thought of using, um, so, well, getting ahead of myself. The one thing that's really missing from this is the ability to set the Ma like a master level on the two oscillators. I can set them to a spot, uh, you know, I can balance the two of them together, but they're still coming out 100%. So one thing that I could do is instead of running them directly into sum B, now I could fix that with attenuators, except I've already used my attenuators, but I have this coma attenuator cable. And so I'm just going to run them into that cable and then plug that cable into sum two. Bring the VCA bias back up. All right, and so this cable has a slider on it. Yeah, I'm just gonna pull both these out for now. The slider is not really good for fine control, at least not with my fingers, but it is. So there we go. Um, you know, it's not the most musical thing at the moment. It's just a big four note chord uh, rolling out here in the space. But like I said, I know that we can we can control this via MIDI. We can control the oscillators via MIDI, MIDI of course. I know that the filter can be controlled via MIDI by turning on key tracking. And I think in version 2.0 of the firmware, you can also uh, activate key tracking for the LFO. I'll have to figure that out later and then see if we can make some like Michael Brecker style chord leads where we tune up a funky chord and then uh, use that whole chord as kind of a lead voice and get that big parallel, you know, no voice leading movement uh, of all those chords in it. Uh, it's a cool sound. Anyway, so we have, oh, um, one last thing. Uh, another thing that's missing here is the ability to filter the overall sound. Uh, right now, as this stands, I can't control this with a wind controller because I, I'm using the filter as a pitch source, as a sound source, instead of as a uh, um, instead of as a filter. So what I could do is I could run the output of this synth into, say, the external audio input on one of my Dave Smith Evolvers, and I can control these two things together, and I could control the filter on the Evolver with 
uh, my controller and I could send note data here with my controller. And then I would still have a uh, breath controlled four note synthesizer. Um, so there's some limitations. Of course, anytime you're working with hardware, um, well, really anything, but especially with hardware, there are limitations, right? We only have two built-in oscillators, right? And this oscillator that I'm using, the resonant filter, it only has one wave shape, right? I can't get a saw wave out of that. Or if I'm wrong and you know how to get a saw wave out of a resonant filter, hit me up and let me know. I'm, I'd be really curious. But I think all you can get out of it is a sine wave. Um, and then, uh, you know, another limitation on this synth, that LFO uh, alias is wildly when you get up into the high register, um, you know, but those things aren't a bad thing. They're just limitations and you have to learn how to work around it. Like this synth only has one filter. So, uh, well, it has two filters, but you have to control them both at the same time, right? Um, you know, it only has one LFO. Some synths have lots of LFOs. It has two filters, or I'm sorry, two envelopes. Some of them have a lot. Um, but that's like one of the cool things about working with this stuff. Those restrictions kind of drive your creativity a little bit. Now, I think for me, that's one of the most exciting things about getting into synthesis in general is learning how to work around limitations or within limitations in your uh, equipment so that you can be, I mean, it just, it fosters creativity. It's a great thing. Um, as always, uh, if you think that I've said anything incorrect or misinformed or just flat out bad or if it has offended you or anything like that, send me a message or leave a comment or something and let me know. I'm always in this to learn something. All right, bye.